Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R540 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R540 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. Uh, this video is going to continue our series and be specifically focused on RAID. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over the different types of RAID and all the different options. Uh, we're going to put up a chart and we're going to show you a, a general breakdown of a few uh, key options as far as the different RAID levels you can do, uh, if they have cache, the PCIe gen, uh, all those differences and a little bit more. Um, and we'll also lay a few out for you as well so that you can actually physically see them. And then we're going to show you why the H731 won't actually work in this machine and we're going to do that in uh, just a second. Let's get going. All right, so I put on my ESD gloves and my ESD jacket and we are uh, good to play around here. So I laid out four options um, and this is uh, only a few of the options because there are actually a lot more options and we'll put up a graph here in a second. Uh, so what I laid out was the HBA330, the H330, the H730P, and the H740P. And there are, uh, again, several more options. We'll go over all those in a second. And the first thing I wanted to note is you notice all of these are PCIe cards, okay? Unfortunately, with the R540, many monos do not work. I'll repeat that again. Many monos do not work with the R540. There is not a dedicated port for the mini mono, so you have to use the PCIe cards in order to get RAID for the R540, at least on the hardware side. But in this case, um, there is a dedicated RAID PCIe slot that you will see in the server in a second. Uh, that's actually kind of in the middle. And so, uh, again, we laid out a few options. So one of the things I want to notice, this H330 actually won't work. And if you look at all the options, you'll notice the big difference for the H330 is the connectors. All the connectors are further back. And on this H330, it's further up. Now, there are other H330s uh, where the connector will be moved back that will work. And again, the H330 is supported. But this specific one would not work. And I wanted to lay it out so that you could actually see the connectors and you can see how much further in it is. And because of that, the connection, there's limited room with the, um, the, the dedicated PCIe slot for the RAID. You physically wouldn't be able to put the plugs in. So this would not actually work, OK? All right, so let's hop in and let's go over the uh, overall options and we're going to go over uh, some of the differences in between them. So the first thing first, uh, you have and honestly, as we go through this too, we're going to name a couple of HBAs, which technically aren't RAID. Uh, they're pass-throughs, but wanted to add them to the list as well, just so that you know all of your options as a whole. Uh, so before someone drops a comment down below trolling me, just wanted to put that out there, right? So uh, first things first, the, uh, the, the RAID options, you've got the S140, which is an onboard software RAID, so obviously we can't lay that out for you. It's going to have RAID levels of uh, 0, 1, 5, and 10. There's no cache, of course, and it's going to be uh, drive speeds of 6 gigabit for SATA and and there is no SAS support. So I wanted to point that out. If you wanted SAS, you have to have a physical hardware RAID, OK? Um, and there's going to be uh, the PCI agent is not available, and it's a software RAID, it's not hardware. So next up is the HBA330. And again, this is technically not a RAID. It's going to be a pass-through. There's no cache. It's going to be 6 gigs for SATA, 12 for SAS, and it is PCIe 3.0, and it is your first hardware option, okay? Next, which we don't actually have laid out here, is going to be the HBA 350i and the HBA 355 E. Both of those are uh, pass-throughs, again, because they're HBAs. Uh, there's no cache. It's going to be uh, 6 gigabit for uh, SATA and 12 gigabit for SAS for both of those. Uh, and those are actually going to be PCIe 4.0, and those are, of course, hardware RAIDs, right? The next is going to be a our H330, and again, this one wouldn't work because the connectors are too far, but there are H330s that will work, so make sure you're being very careful when you're buying your H330s, and H330s are uh, an excellent option for storage. Uh, it is really probably the best option for storage, uh, and you're going to have RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 10, and 50. There's no cache, unfortunately, with the H330. It's 6 gig for SAS, 12 for SATA, I'm sorry, 6 gig for SATA, 12 for SAS, uh, PCIe 3.0, and it is, of course, a hardware RAID. And then next up is the H. 
H730P. The H730P is going to be 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, and 60. It's 2 gig cache, and it's going to be a 6 gigabit for SATA and 12 gigabit for SAS. It is PCIe 3.0, and it is a hardware RAID. Uh, next up is the H740P, one of my personal favorites because it has 8 gigabit or 8 gigabytes for cache. It's going to be the uh, same same RAID levels uh, 0 1 5 6 10 50 and 60. It's going to be 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, and it's going to be a PCIe 3.1 and it is of course a hardware RAID. Next up is the H 840. The H840 is 0 1 5 6 10 50 and 60. 8 gigabit or 8 gigabyte for the cache, 6 gigabit uh, SATA, 12 gigabit SAS, PCA 3.1, and it is a hardware RAID. Next up is the H350. The H350 is a zero. Uh, it's going to do zero, one, and ten. It's going to be uh, no cache, and it's going to be six for SATA, twelve for SAS. PCIe 4.0. So those are uh, the the main options right there. And then the last but not least is the H750, which is going to be 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60. 8 gigabytes for cache, 6 gigabit for SATA, 12 for SAS, PCIe 4.0. 4.0 and it is a hardware RAID. So now that we've gone through all the options and as I said there are many options and these are just a few um, on our website uh, at least right now I'm sure we're going to add more options as we go forward. Right now the main options that we put out are the uh, HBA 330, uh, the H330, the H730P and the H740P which is what we have laid out right here. Uh, but again if you wanted something that's not on there you can always uh, contact our sales team and we can always customize uh, whatever you need. Uh, so if there's something that we're not showing definitely just let us know. So, all right, now what we're going to do is actually install our RAID, and then after we install it, we are going to uh, go ahead and configure our RAID, and we're going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to configure RAID. Let's get going. All right, so now we're going to install our H330. So all you're going to need is your H330. You're not going to need any tools to do this. This will be a, a pretty simple install overall. So we're going to need to remove the riser, and the uh, air baffle. So we're just going to lift the riser straight up. And sometimes it'll get stuck right here. There's a little piece that can sometimes stick out. So you gotta be careful with that. If that gets stuck, you don't wanna break that by lifting up too hard. All right, the next thing you wanna do is remove the air baffle. So we're gonna pull this straight up. So as we discussed, there is an internal uh, PCIe slot specifically for the RAID, okay? And you'll also notice, I guess you should have pointed this out, every one that we were showing has a low profile. Uh, you could technically put no profile, but it kind of dangles, and I'm not a big fan of that. So if you're buying them from us, we're gonna put a low profile one in, um, and of course a high profile won't fit. So uh, in order to uh, remove this, all you need to do is push this blue tab down, nice and simple. And then this is going to come straight up, and right here, is where we are going to install our card. So all you need to do is simply line everything up. So we're gonna come in right here. We're gonna put our connectors together and we're gonna slide it in and you'll notice there's a spot right here. And everything is, uh, the tip of the bracket is in right here and everything is nice and flush. And again, that's why I personally like the bracket because it helps hold it in better. All right, so before we install our riser, we need to uh, connect our cable, uh, which goes to the back plane to the card itself. So essentially, you're just going to uh, clip this in and make sure that it pops in. And there's not a lot of space that you're working with, so uh, just be nice and careful. So we're going to swing this back around, and we are going to install our riser right now. So we're going to come straight down, just make sure our connections are in proper which right now I don't think they are because they're not sliding in proper. All right, there we go. So you're going to feel it physically go in. It's nice and flush. Um, if your cables are in the way, you can technically kind of pull them right here if there's uh, too much slack that's in the way. Uh, so kind of however you need to do it to make sure that everything is uh, in proper. But realistically, uh, it was a, a pretty easy install overall. Uh, the, the connection is probably the hardest part, and it's really not that difficult. So all right, so now that we've done that, we are going to uh, reinstall our riser and our air baffle. So we'll go ahead and put the air baffle in first. All right, so the air baffle, and now we're gonna drop our riser back in. 
And really, as, as you notice, this is a pretty easy install overall. Uh, it's, it doesn't take too much time. Uh, it's nice and simple, and we're good to go. So now that we have installed our card, we're going to go ahead and show you how to configure RAID 5. But again, the steps for RAID 5 will be very similar if you want to configure a different RAID. So this will help you out however you go. Let's get going. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to configure RAID 5. You're going to want to make sure that you have a RAID controller installed into your server. Scott showed you how to do this beforehand, so go ahead and follow his instructions. And then once you've installed a RAID controller, you can actually go ahead and configure RAID 5. Um, and not just RAID 5, you can configure other RAID levels as well, but specifically in this video, we're going to be going over RAID 5. You also want to make sure that you have a minimum of three drives installed in order to configure RAID 5. Um, this is something that's specific for RAID 5. RAID 0 and RAID 1, they have different minimum drive requirements. So go ahead and research the drive requirements for the desired RAID level that you are looking for, and then just make sure you have that number of drives installed. And if you want to install more than that minimum, then you're more than welcome to. But specifically for this video, you're going to want to need a minimum of three drives plugged into your server. So in order to get started, you want to go ahead and boot up your server. And during post, you want to go ahead and press F2 so we can go into system setup. Once in system setup, go ahead and scroll down to device settings. Once we're in device settings, you want to go ahead and click on the option that represents our RAID controller. And inside of this menu, we can go ahead and click on configuration management. And then we can click on create virtual disk. Once we're in here, we can go ahead and select our RAID level. So like we said earlier, we're gonna go ahead and do RAID 5. We're gonna leave unconfigured capacity unchecked, and then we're gonna select select physical disk. We wanna go ahead and change the media type to both, and then apply those changes. And then down here, we wanna select all three of our drives, and then we wanna click apply changes. Now we just wanna go ahead and click OK. And then we can scroll up and then click Create Virtual Disk, then click Confirm, and then Yes. Then we can just go ahead and click OK again. So really what that was saying was that, hey, if you do this operation, if we create this virtual disk, it will erase all the data that is on, that, on those drives. So if you're OK with erasing the data that's on these drives or those drives have no data at all, then you're all good to create the virtual disk. Now once that's done loading, there's only one step I like to take just so I can make sure that everything was done properly and that creating this virtual disk did indeed work. So we want to go back to that main menu and then go to virtual disk management. And here we can see where it says virtual disk zero, RAID 5. So this is that RAID 5 array that we just created. So as you can see, it did indeed work, and we have successfully configured RAID 5. If you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash the subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, whether it's Dell, HP, Supermicro, Cisco, um, we have plenty in stock. We also have AMD Ryzen servers, AMD Epic servers, Intel Xeon scalable servers. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Take care, guys.